Welcome to Let's Up Powerball, episode 34. From what I can tell, there are about four main ways to connect up a Powerball. Let us. There's the way that I did it. My two, two kilowatt pack was a monolithic block. So everything just soldered together. And that was just one humongous chunk with 300, 336 cells to kilowatt watt hours and my plan had been to just build more 2 kilowatt packs to build up a larger a larger pack if, if I wanted to but since discovering how heavy those are the, the new plan could be to just build up one kilowatt hour kilowatt hour blocks and then build ten of those to make ten kilowatt hours so that's one perfectly reasonable option um, the other way that most people are using at the moment most people are doing are copying Jehu Garcia and I'll call that the big block design where he has somewhere 100 to 150 cells all wired up in a parallel block and then you have say seven of those to make a 24 volt 25 volt pack so this has the advantage that it's conceptually quite simple you solder connect up a whole bunch of batteries all in parallel and then you have these seven discrete blocks and Jehu did 150 because he was wanting to put it into his electric samba and he wanted to pull 600 amps in the normal power situation you don't actually need that many amps um, so you can afford to do a smaller pack like say 100 100 cells in a block and then you might do multiple ones of that to build up a, a, a really big big power wall. then so most people are, are doing that at the moment um, the other system I've seen is what I call small blocks and that's what Chris Viral and his dad are doing with their 40 kilowatt hour pack what they have is a shelving system where they've got oodles just oodles and oodles of small bricks of 36 cells and they slot those into this wooden shelving thing that they've built and wire them up in order to achieve the desired voltage and when they want to add more capacity they have to put in a whole bunch of these 36 cells um, to achieve the desired volts and that has the advantage that if you have a weak block a small weak one of the blocks is not working particularly well you can yank out a small block and test it and replace it with a small block and you don't have to replace it with a big block so in this scenario if you have a poorly performing um, one of these blocks is fading then you have to build another whole big block and replace that and you probably have to switch the whole system down in order to do the replacement if you have lots of small blocks you can actually yank out a, a little block even while the system is running and it's easy to build a small block to replace and you can incrementally um, increase the capacity by building new blocks that new small blocks that have uh, better capacity and you can just swap out the lowest capacity block and slam in a new higher capacity block and you slowly incrementally um, improve the capacity of the block so that is quite nice. Also, if you have this fused, I think Chris Viral, I haven't seen him doing any 
Tesla style fuses but if you did then and you noticed that one of the fuses had blown it's much less drama to fix or replace a small block than it is a, a big block or um, a monolithic block and then just to be extreme the fourth option would be battery holders and by that I mean these things here um, you could because these are actually really cheap uh, you could conceivably build up a whole power wall using these um, I did a quick calculation if I wanted to build another uh, 2 kilowatt hour pack the that would require because I because I use everything in pairs, uh, that would only require 42 four-way battery holders, which you could string along and make a 2 kilowatt um, power shelf, not a power wall, but a power shelf. And then, of course, you could, you could make yourself a shelving system that um, consisted of lots of 1 or 2 kilowatt um, shelves and uh, Bob's your uncle. and initially I was I just thought of this idea as kind of an extreme example to help me clarify why I should go with with one of the these options um, but the more I think about it the more I quite like this because if you have um, a fuse on one end and the fuse blows you can yank out the cell or the pair of cells, um, fix the fuse and slam in a fresh pair of cells. Ridiculously simple. If you want to slowly increase the capacity of your of your two kilowatt hour pack, you you could say you had um, a three thousand one hundred ninety nine milliamp hour cell in your pack you can just yank that out bung in a higher capacity cell 4594 and that would incrementally raise the capacity of your cell and then you just keep on doing that as you're pulling open laptop batteries and measuring you find yourself oh i've got a better better cell than one that's in the pack just slap it in and you're done uh, so this is actually quite a nice system um, and I'm, I'm tempted to make up a, a 1 or 2 kilowatt hour version of this just to see how straightforward it is. Um, certainly it might be the best way, if you're new to the whole Powerwall game, this might be a really good way to get started. Um, I'm sure people have um, done use these to make small packs, but because the price is so reasonable, 42 of the of the four way battery holders would cost 65 US dollars which 65 US dollars isn't too bad for a um, pretty clean little system so that's an interesting scenario what I really am itching to do is um, the small block scenario because I I <laughs> My, my gut feeling is that this is slightly, well, I can't, surely this is a ridiculous way to do it, but maybe it's not. Um, it feels ridiculous when, it, having come from doing a monolithic block, um, this would be kind of extreme, going the other way to the extreme. It may be that I should do this just to experience the, the difference, but um, what I have been working towards is a small block design and so I have improved I had these my previous pack used these um, 3d printed battery holders and I've just done a new design that would work with the small block scenario and so what I've got is uh, 24 cells 12 pairs that just 
um, slot in quite nicely. Uh, that takes on my um, slow little 3D printer, it takes two hours to print one of these. Um, so it's, it's not fast. I've got um, slots for the strapping to, to go through and I've, you can't actually see but I've actually got two layers of strapping going in there now to uh, improve the current capacity, carrying capacity and then I've got these um, gold plated or copper plated uh, banana plugs so that if I have it in some kind of shelving system I slide these in and then I'll plug it into the main wiring harness bus system um, and then I'll be done. So that is what I've been drifting towards because it's kind of an extension of what I've been doing before only more modularized. Um, the battery holder scenario is really intriguing me uh, but what I really need is some good way of clarifying which way I should go. So I made myself up a little decision matrix to try and help get a sense of which way I should go. And I've got a series of questions here that um, I've listed in priority order. This is my priority. Uh, how much does it cost? How much time does it take to build? How safe is it? How easy is it to build? How easy is it to maintain? And so on. Um, down to how much space does it require, which is my last priority. And um, so I went through and I rated all the different design options from one being worst, four being the best, in terms of um, each of these questions. And what it ended up telling me was that they're all about the same, which is not what I wanted to see. Well, I was hoping there'd be some nice clear indicator that my preferred option, the small bricks scenario, was way better, but, but they're all within three points of each other, so that doesn't really help me. Uh, I even then I went to priority rated them, so this was worth twice as much as these, uh, and that came out even less the way I wanted which <laughs> it says that small blocks design is the worst of the four options and the, my monolithic pack setup is the best for my priorities and my list of, of um, questions. So, hmm, um, so I'm, I'm desperately needing your assistance. Which way should I go? I could go one kilowatt packs, that would be easy to do because I know how to do that. I've already done that. Um, I've done one kilowatts and two kilowatt monolithic blocks. I'm not keen on the big block. I'm not yet convinced that that's the right way to go. Um, one of the things I don't like is the whole bus bar scenario. Having to do big fat massive bus bars um, I'm not so keen on. And uh, for a power wall you don't need massive current flows. You, you want um, to prioritise capacity rather than um, current. So at the moment I'm kind of leaning between the small blocks and uh, the battery holder scenario. Let me know which, um, which way would you recommend going. Uh, is this really a crazy idea? I think I have to build one to see and I'm quite keen on this too. But it could be that I'm keen on this just because I've got a 3D printer that lets me design these these nice battery holders. Um, maybe I'm, I'm biased towards these because of my tool set. Let me know what you think. Would love to get some more ideas, some more thoughts. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.